What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. So before we get started, like check this out. So although I am an atheist, like I have no problem with religious people. All right, like if you are a person of faith, like do your thing, boo, do your thing. I'm not one of those atheists who like runs around talking about, you know, oh, religious people are stupid. That is none of my business. If that is keeping you happy, if that's giving you, you know, direction, if that's whatever your beliefs are, no matter why you do it, whatever it is, I really don't care. The only time I have a problem is when religions are hurting people. That is my issue, right? Like one of the prime examples is the Westboro Baptist Church and like the terrible, disgusting things they do. But today, obviously you saw with the title, we're going to be talking about Scientology, all right? And I don't know how many of you have watched uh, Leah Ramini's uh, documentary or interviews with her, but she is an actress and former member of the Church of Scientology. And she talks about how harmful this religion is and how they try to destroy the lives of people. But they don't, I don't know other churches that demand to destroy people's lives if they leave and speak out publicly against it. I don't know real churches who you, demand families to break apart if one feels uh, that they should leave the church and their policies actually mandate to destroy people's lives. It actually has doctrine that says that, that says find out what's important to them and go after it. But yeah, I didn't realize that uh, Scientologists were out here like actually trying to recruit people. Like I grew up here in Las Vegas with a bunch of Mormons, so I have a bunch of friends who went on missions and you know, the whole bike door to door thing and everything like that. But um, my beautiful girlfriend Tristan, she goes to the, the, the college here in Las Vegas and she was telling me about how Scientologists like actually set up a booth in one of these like areas at uh, her school. I think they have like a free speech area or something. They set up this booth and they use their little Dianetics machine and that's like their form of treating mental illness and psychology and I'm not entirely sure, but I'm gonna discuss a little bit about their machine a little bit later on, right? So I started like going into this rabbit hole and doing some research just trying to figure out how they help people with their mental health issues based on this machine. But then, then I realized they have an entire documentary. They even have a museum out in LA about like how psychiatry is this industry of death. And I sat down and watched this documentary with Tristan and it is absolutely ridiculous all right so the way the documentary is set up it's like it's basically like mm, i don't know 10 or 20 videos like that are like five minutes each put back to back to back if you watch the full thing um i think you can find all the segments separately so anyways like i'm gonna be discussing just like the first half in this video if you guys like it and want me to cover the second half just let me know in the comments or just give the video a thumbs up or whatever, all right? But let's break down this documentary. Basically, an overall kind of synopsis of this documentary is they talk about the history of psychiatry in the United States. And I don't think it's a secret that the history of psychiatry, not even in the United States, but around the world, is pretty messed up. Like going back like a hundred years, right? Uh, just like they did so many awful things. They had these things that like, were basically like torture devices, right? For the mentally ill. And back then for a long time, they weren't even trying to treat people. They were just locking people up and just trying to get them out of society's way. You know what I mean? But this documentary, it goes through different terrible times in uh, the, the history of psychiatry. They talk about, you know, eugenics. They talk about lobotomies and like those weird torture type devices and everything like that in this. So. Here's, here's the first issue, all right? Like, when we're talking about the history of psychiatry from what, like, a hundred years ago? Like, that's not really a way to say that the current state of this field is bad or it's wrong. Like, just in recent decades, we've had so many, so many advances in science. Like, for example, 
A great example is cognitive behavioral therapy, all right? Like, I don't know how many of you have tried cognitive behavioral therapy, but this is an evidence-based form of therapy, all right? So they've actually hooked people up to brain scans and they see how the brain actually changes and rewires itself through CBT therapy, uh, therapy practices, right? So we do have scientific evidence for what's happening today. So to say, oh, don't, don't go see a therapist or psychologist because here's what they were doing a hundred years ago, all right? Like, the reality is, is that any industry that you look into was awful, right? Like, think about it. Like, we, we have a history of slavery. Like, if you look at the Industrial Revolution, like, how long did it take until we had labor laws, right? And not working people to death or not having any kind of standards in these factories. What about child labor laws, you know what I mean? Um, what about schools and that type of uh, segregation, everything like that? Like, are we going to say that you shouldn't go to school or go to work because the history was awful? Like, if that's the case, then honestly, none of us should even see a doctor, all right? So the next thing that really fascinates me about this Scientology documentary is like they're talking about what psychiatry was doing like pretty much a hundred years ago, but look at what Scientology is doing today, all right? So this, this little device right here is called an electropsychometer, AKA an e-meter, which is supposed to help see your thoughts, all right? And basically this thing is just a, a, a fancy name for something that's uh, testing for skin conductivity. So. It's like a poor man's lie detector, all right? So like when, if you ever take a lie detector test, I've never had to take one, but if you ever have, basically those things work by checking like your, your pulse, your heart rate, and they also check uh, to see if you're sweating, right? So that's kind of what this little machine does. But this is actually what's been at my girlfriend's school because as you can see from this picture right here, they go around and they set up little booths where they're like, hey, Come on over, let's see your thoughts together. And here's my theory, here's, here's my theory. And if any of you know more about Scientology than I do, you can let me know if I'm going in the right direction. But here's my theory about why they do this, why they push people away from psychology, why they use their little you know, e-meter and everything like that is, when you push people away from mental health professionals and the fields of psychology and psychiatry and you know therapy and counseling and all those things when you push people away it's easy to bring people in to that religion because you could say no don't trust anybody else don't trust anybody else right it's almost like this form of abuse like if you've ever been in an abusive relationship one of the strategies that people use is to isolate you from everybody else, right? Like, I don't like throwing around the word cult all willy-nilly. Like, I just, I'm not a fan of that. Like, I watch a lot of stuff on cults and everything like that. But like, it's, I have no problem saying cultish, you know what I mean? But pushing you away from like actual science and professionals and if you learn more about Scientology, they like try to separate you from, you know, certain people and everything like that. But anyways, the next thing, the next thing in this documentary, which is absolute, like, I can't, I can't understand it. So one of the ways that they try to argue that psychology and psychiatry is not something you should be a part of is they bring psychologists and psychiatrists in their documentary to interview them. Like, what? And then I had this other thought. I'm like, wait a second. Do these like professors and psychologists even know that they're being interviewed for a Scientology documentary that is completely anti-psychiatry? Like think about that. Like were they able to just walk up to a psychiatrist or like a professor and say, hey, we're doing a video about how awful your field is. Can you, can you come over here and let us interview you? Like that doesn't add up. So I'm wondering if they even knew what they were going to be a part of. So, <clears throat> Uh, uh, intertwined in these interviews that they do, they also bring in these authors, right? And as some of you know, like I read a ton, I read a ton. 
And the primary type of book I read, like I read a lot of nonfiction, but I absolutely love the field of psychology. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this video, right? Because there's so much science that backs it up. But anyways, I read a lot of books on psychology and all the different studies they do and the, the advances that we're making that can help people even more with depression, anxiety, and trauma, and all sorts of other disorders, right? And when I before I pick up a book, I wanna know that the author is credible right? Like, I want to see, like, you know, what do their peers say and everything like that. And a lot of the, um, the books I get recommended are by uh, other psychologists who are recommending them, right? By other people who have made great advances. So, for example, um, I don't know how many of you know about, like, Daniel Kahneman. He is a, a Nobel Prize winner. Um, He's done a lot of work in like the behavioral sciences and uh, everything like that. Um, but anyways, he has done work with uh, a guy whose book I'm reading right now, I believe his name is Peter Tetlock. But anyways, you can see how like credible people uh, recommend other credible people and everything like that. So anyways, in the Scientology documentary, they're showing these different authors with the title doctor in front of their name. So if I can't find any like anybody to vouch for those people, I just go and I look up like the reviews, right? I look up their reviews because then you can kind of see like, you know, what, what the book's all about. I try not to put too much weight on like good or bad reviews because it's so subjective. Like I've, I've seen terrible reviews for books that I absolutely love. But when it comes to guys that they interviewed on here, like Ty Colbert and Lee Coleman, when you look up their books, like even on Goodreads, which is like the haven for book reviews, they have zero, right? So for me, the Scientology documentary, in one of the many, many ways that it's misleading, is showing these, these doctors who also have books that nobody has read, right? Like there are doctors who get a PhD and they're completely just like away from the field and the industry and their peers are like, uh-uh, I don't, I don't hang out with that dude. He, he talks a little, he talks a little cray cray. You know what I mean? Um, but anyways, finally, throughout this documentary, they have this like, a uh, narrator with this like ominous voice and he's just throwing out these like stats and statistics talking about like everybody died there's so many people dying and then it, it talks about like all of the billions that uh you know the the industry makes from like the pharmaceutical companies to you know healthcare and everything like that and hey hey i believe that they are making you know, this is a huge industry. It's a huge industry. And part of it is because a lot of people struggle with their mental health. But, but throughout the documentary, like they're just throwing these numbers and stats at you everywhere. And there is not one source, not a single source. All right. So they're just throwing numbers out there that you can't even verify. You know what I mean? It's like, where did you get these numbers from? Okay. But anyways, What's the solution? Like, I think it's important to talk about um, things like this because, for example, like I'm a prime example. I didn't know. I didn't know they were out here trying to recruit people. I didn't know that they were so anti-psychology until recently. You know what I mean? And that that's harmful, you know? Um, I've been reading a lot of books about, you know, uh, the way our brain works with like cognitive dissonance and biases and everything like that. And I could, I could picture somebody who had a bad experience on a medication, a bad experience in a treatment facility, a bad experience, you know, with a therapist or a psychologist, and then stumbling across a documentary like this and it confirming what they thought like, oh, okay, this whole, this whole field is full of quacks. No, that's not how it is, right? Sometimes you'll try a medication that just doesn't really work well for you try a new medication, right? Sometimes you might go to a treatment facility that just sucked. But 
I worked in a treatment facility for a few years and a lot of times what I saw was it was based on their subjective experience. You'd have two people, one of them absolutely loved it, said it saved their life, the other person absolutely hated it, right? And when it comes to like therapists and stuff like that, like sometimes you just get a bad therapist, you know what I mean? So I, I hope nobody watches these documentaries from Scientology and completely writes off this entire industry because like I said at the beginning, there is science that backs this thing up. So if you are struggling with your mental health, like go get help. And if you can't afford it, like I couldn't for many, many, many years, there are so many resources out there for people who don't have insurance, who don't have money. There are a lot of uh, government funded programs here in the United States, um, pretty much in every single state. I believe you can call 211 or go to the SAMHSA website and, and yeah, get help. Or if you, if you don't have access to that for some reason, I get some books. Like I said, some of the greatest minds in psychology, in therapy, and everything like that, they are putting all of their knowledge, all of their wisdom into these books. There are workbooks and everything like that. Like you can find CBT workbooks and start practicing yourself. The best option is to work with a mental health professional, but I know what it's like to not have access to one, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't work on it. You know what I mean? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. Again, let me know if you want me to do a part two discussing some of the stuff in the second half of this, this wacky documentary. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my books over at TheRewiredSoul.com or merch from the merch store. You are all amazing. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.